Welcome to Technovation. I'm your host, Peter High. Our broadcast today comes from our most recent Meta Strategy Digital Symposium, and it features a conversation I had with Google Cloud Chief Executive Officer Thomas Curian. Thomas has been the Chief Executive Officer of Google Cloud for the past three and a half years, following a 22-year career at Oracle, ending his tenure there as the president of the company. In this interview, Thomas provides an assessment of where we are currently in the evolution of cloud computing and how Google's cloud platform differs from the rest of the players in the industry. Thomas then describes Google's ambitious mission to train 40 million people on cloud technology, why it's important, and the methods Google will use. Finally, Thomas looks ahead at the future of work and the role technology and collaboration tools will play in managing a hybrid workforce. Uh, Thomas, it's a pleasure to, to spend time with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Peter. Good to be with you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Well, uh, Thomas, the cloud is not new. Uh, everyone who is on here is certainly using the cloud and probably has for some time. What's so interesting is it's ever evolving. Its uses, our perceptions of its uh, security, the whether it's private, public, different options we might choose, of course, different partners we might choose to engage with as a result of that. If you wouldn't mind kind of beginning at the, the 30,000 uh, level of view, uh, 30,000 foot level view, where are we in the overall evolution of the cloud from your perspective, please? You know, I, cloud, as you said, Peter, has evolved a lot. If you went back to 1999, 2000, and you asked people what what's cloud, they didn't know what cloud was, but they started using early application software as a service, Intuit, NetSuite, Salesforce, and the value proposition is really convenience. And then about seven to 10 years later, infrastructure as a service came along. And the value proposition was, you don't have to build run data centers, you can use ours. And when, when that value proposition came along, the primary value proposition was around convenience. You get large scale compute much more flexibly and cost. Now, as we see cloud evolving, we see cloud has to certainly do convenience, cost, agility, but it's got to do more than that. And so the key thing that we're seeing is what does it enable for new capability that an organization can get in a fundamentally different way? And when we say that, the fundamentally new things, can you give them better capability for data analytics? So they can understand customers, they can understand their supply chain, they can plan their business better particularly in a volatile economy. Second, can you give them better capability to protect their systems with cybersecurity much simpler, easier? Can you make advances around artificial intelligence much easier for people to adopt in their existing business processes, the way that they handle customer relationship management, the way that they're originating loans and mortgages, practical things. And then next is how does all this help them transform their business digitally, because that is the big change that we've seen through the pandemic, but we see that as a fundamental shift going forward in every industry. Yeah, very interesting. And it, uh, it, it is certainly clear to everyone who's here, there, one of the fascinating aspects of your part of the cloud space is that there are three primary major players, um, obviously AWS and Microsoft, uh, Azure is the other two. So you obviously spend a fair amount of time thinking about points of differentiation, why an organization might choose Google Cloud versus the other two players. Talk a bit about uh, that message, if you would. Uh, how do you differentiate yourself uh, from the other two major, significant, well-funded players that, that, that are your competition? We differentiate in a variety of different areas, and I'm reflecting why customers choose us. Mm -hmm. If you look at infrastructure, you know our general view is most large organizations uh, want to use technology from multiple cloud providers now. And the biggest shortage right now is skills. And so rather than fragmenting your skill base and saying, I got one group of people in my organization that knows cloud one, another one that does cloud two, another one does cloud three, our view is, can you give people the ability to build applications once and deploy in a very flexible environment across clouds? We pioneered that notion, it's called multi-cloud. Large organizations, Discovery Channel, Plaid, a variety of them are building with our technology and running across clouds. The second one was data as a critical asset to a company. We have not only world-class data processing capability, but it can also analyze data sitting in multiple clouds. So you don't have to move all your data. 
in order to get value from your data. And you've seen stories that are public, the work we're doing with UPS on routing, using our analytic platform, the work we did with HSBC on regulatory compliance and liquidity reporting, which is super important in financial markets, the work we did at Procter & Gamble to give them a much better view of their customers. Uh, our view is analytics is a critical, critical element permeating uh, the whole process of digitization, and we do have differences. On cybersecurity, the variety of different threats that are going on has accelerated materially. And it's accelerated not just in frequency and magnitude, but the variety of them. And so just to give you an example, a few years ago, people did not think that their software supply chain would have compromises. Uh, so at Google, we've always used open source technology. And one of the things we've always felt was you can't trust the origin of the open source technology. You've got to validate it and assure it. And we came up with a mechanism to validate this, these open source libraries and ensure that they don't compromise your software supply chain. And we not only do it now, we've been doing it for 12 years at Google, but we're now, uh, yesterday we announced that we're launching the first version of what we call assured open source software, bringing this new capability to all customers who are using open source, which is widely, widely deployed now. So in each area, as we look and think about the problems, we're solving certain things differently than other providers. And we have recognized certain things that large companies want. Large companies want the flexibility of choice from multiple cloud providers. And you have to learn to coexist with them. You can't say, well, this is the only cloud you should use and therefore all of your workloads can only run here. Um, so there are differences in what we do. We're very pleased with customers adopting and using, and we're also solving new areas and new problems. One example is, in telecommunications networks were never run on clouds. Uh, we felt that you know, if you look at a telecommunications network, it can get benefits from reliability, scale, performance, but also the ability to adjust dynamically based on traffic patterns that you see. And we run our own global network, which is enormous scale and transit, Google search, YouTube, all of these capabilities. To consumers, we run it on that architecture. And now we're bringing that to telecommunications customers. An example is the recent announcement we had with Bell Canada, where we run their 5G core on our cloud and allows them to get resilience and scale when they're deploying the global network. Very interesting. I appreciate that overview and covering a variety of different topics there about, that, that are points of differentiation, while also taking head on some of the challenges that uh, many perceive uh, in in their their how they interact with the cloud. And, and so uh, great to get some of those examples as well. Let's talk a bit about the topic, though, of, of skilling. Uh, I, I know you've invested a lot in skills training and have plans to train 40 million people on cloud technology. What, why is this, why do you perceive this to be so important? And talk a bit about some of the methods that you and the team are using, if you don't mind, Thomas. Yeah, it's a great question. Skills, you know, having technology, but not having people be able to use the technology because of a lack of skills, it's just not, it's, it's gonna get, as, become a big impediment for people who want to use it and transform their business, right? So we look at it as we're solving three real problems. Number one, how do we train developers around the world and in companies with both technical training, certification, and really hands-on experiences with our products to learn how to adopt it? So there's a lot of investment that we're making on that. We have committed to train 40 million developers so that every company has access to skills using our technology. Uh, one of the things it also does is it fosters a market for talent uh, today, the GCP Google Cloud Platform Certified Architect has been the highest paid job in IT for the last three years. And so we really want to continue to foster and grow that because it's valuable also during this period of economic uncertainty for people to develop those engineering skills. The second thing though, is we're also committed to making products much easier to use. And when we say we're committed to making products much easier to use, Historically, for example, when you ask people why was cybersecurity, why were there so many cybersecurity challenges? 
It's because configuring your system to be secure by default is quite difficult. And so we're simplifying how people can adopt, for example, new cybersecurity tools by making configuration by default much easier, encryption by default much easier. Um, the, similarly, for artificial intelligence, you know, if you really want AI to permeate all software and not have an intelligent version of the software and a non-intelligent version of software, you've got to have the system help people build models and use models rather than require every company to hire so many data scientists. So that's the second thing, simplification. And the third thing that we're doing is we recognize that there are multiple cloud providers. You know, I always say, imagine how useful the internet would be if certain websites only ran in Netscape's browser and other websites only ran in Microsoft's browser and other websites ran in, you know, the Firefox browser, right? The internet wouldn't be as widespread as it is today. Mm -hmm. So we look at that and say, if cloud technology had simplified programming models where a developer could build an applications once and deploy to any cloud, it would also hugely reduce the challenges people have from technology adoption because you don't have to split up your team into a Google team, an Amazon team, a Microsoft team. So we're focused on training enablement, simplification, and openness to address this challenge on skills. That's great. What a, what a great overview. Another topic that so many people are interested in and would love to get your thoughts on, Thomas, is managing a, a hybrid workforce. I think many, many companies now plan to have some, some kind of hybrid means of operating. And I wonder um, what your own thoughts are about that, about managing it best and how uh, technology plays a role in ensuring that, that, that that's a successful pathway forward. You know, I, I feel, Peter, we're all learning through this process, right? And there are three or four important lessons that we at Google have taken. First of all, we don't call it a return to office. We call it a transition to hybrid work because there was this view that People were at home and one day we're going to wave a wand and everybody's going to be back at the office. But that's not the way that actually our teams, when we talk to customers, their teams want to work. They want to find the right mechanism to combine the things that you get in a physical space, things like creativity, ideation, collaboration. But they also want to have the flexibility to work from multiple places. So the first thing we're doing is we're, we're starting this program that we're underway with our products as well as our own program bringing people back is recognizing we call it transition to hybrid, not return to office. And that's recognizing that we are in a process of learning. The second thing we're doing is we think that, you know, if you look at retail stores that were designed before e-commerce and retail stores that were designed after e-commerce, their layout was fundamentally different. And that's because a lot of product discovery, prior to e-commerce, you walk to the store to look at things. Post e-commerce, a lot of the discovery was done online and you went to the store to either pick up the product or to talk to somebody about the product for some expertise and go. In the same way that that transition happened with physical space, we are redesigning our own physical space, recognizing that the office physical facility and people uh, who want to come in periodically to meet with people but not live there uh, every day, the, the need for new kinds of spaces are important. And we are actually prototyping ourselves and with a variety of partners in the collaboration tool space, a variety of new layouts to physical space. Third, if you assume that people still need to meet, but there's no such thing as a physical space where everybody's going to be, we have, we're working actively on our collaboration tools, something called Google Workspace, to create a digital place where people can meet. Uh, because people still need to meet and people still need to collaborate and work together. And we're bringing all of the tools that people need, whether that's working on new ideas, bringing digital whiteboarding, uh, all the forms of communication, chat, audio, video, calling uh, communities into this digital workspace. And then finally, we recognize that uh, people want to have new kinds of, you know, one common example we see is that there are people who 
work remotely. And when you have a video conference, the people remotely actually look fine. It's the people in the office, in a large conference room, all huddled at the end of them that look like very small icons of people to the people remotely. So we're also working on much more immersive tooling to bring the people in this digital environment together in more effective ways. So all this, and we want to learn and, and really evolve both our technology and ways of working and to learn from people and to share with people what we're doing. Wonderful. Well, we're so so pleased to have heard from you today. Thank you so much for joining us, Thomas Curran, and enlightening us on your vision for the future of Google and the, view, the future of the cloud, more generally speaking. Thank you for having me, Peter.